What is going on dudes and welcome to another Black Ops video and in this video more than ever before I suggest you fasten your seatbelts and stay until the very end because this could turn out to be one hell of a discussion but before we get started and if you feel so inclined I would like to encourage you to take just a second to leave a rating at some point over the course of this video. Now I wanted to start off by addressing a question which arose after I posted my last video which was uh, why did I not stress the idea of reporting these boosters at the top of the Black Ops leaderboards. Now reason being, and I actually think the best way to answer this is through analogy, um, a marijuana smoking analogy for that matter, in that I personally don't smoke, I think it is unhealthy, and I also prefer to keep my wits about me at all times. But at the same time, I voted yes on Prop 19, and uh, though that failed and smoking dope is still illegal, I think if people want to do it themselves, I have no qualms about it, as it has no effect on me or any unwilling participants. And I think that people should be free to do what they desire in their own privacy. Now, on the other hand, if some random stranger took a bong load and proceeded to come over to me and blow it in my face, or even worse, if someone was driving while high and, and caused a car accident, I would be inclined to punch them straight in the nose and or contact some authority to give them proper discipline. Um, <laughs> in the same way, I think if people boosting are boosting in a, a private or locked lobby, so long as they are not negatively impacting anyone but themselves, I don't really feel at liberty to go out of my way to get them in trouble by reporting them. Uh, but on the other hand, if there is even one unwilling participant to get involved in the mix, as was the case with people who boosted in free-for-alls on Modern Warfare 2, I think it is totally called for to report the hell out of them and demonstrate to them your displeasure with their actions. Now, all this leads into my main topic, as I feel a need to be uh, completely open with you guys about my past, so I wanted to discuss with you all a bit of my personal history, which the grand majority of you are probably not aware of, but is something which most certainly served as a major factor in shaping not only who I am now as someone who plays video games, but also who I am today as an, as an overall person. So, to start off, I'd like to turn back the clock a couple of years, long before I had a PBR, or even a YouTube account for that matter, and back to the time when World at War was still in its prime. And, and at this point in my life, I guess I really wasn't all that content with the way things were going for me from a social standpoint at least, and although my grades in school never suffered, I guess I just didn't have all that many people whom I could consider friends and, and who I could hang out with and share my, well, I don't know, whatever was on my mind at the time. So during this period, I would play Call of Duty on a regular basis, and through my various endeavors on the game, I gradually became acquainted with and, and sucked into, well, a clique of boosters, to state it quite plainly, and here is where the plot thickens. So what would happen is, and it sort of escalated gradually, is that I would be invited into these locked lobbies where it would be myself and a few booster friends on one team, and we would take turns killing accounts on the other team which wouldn't fight back, much like what some of the guys high up on the Black Ops leaderboards are doing now. Uh, now this sort of phase, if that's what you want to call it, lasted several months, during which it was like boosting became my drug, and in retrospect, from a much more mature standpoint, um, the only way I can explain this behavior to myself now is that I guess in in seeing my name high up on some virtual leaderboard that had absolutely no relevance nor significance whatsoever to real life, it gave me this completely irrational sense of accomplishment as if I somehow mattered because I had these unrealistic boosted stats on a video game and, and that somehow compensated for my true insecurities and made me a better person and as if the few people who even bothered to look at these leaderboards would hold some sort of higher respect for me upon seeing my username at the top and to put it simply I was I was absolutely pathetic and, and delusional and it was only once things started picking up again in my real life that I was able to truly recognize the detriment of what I had been doing in Vow, not only to never make the same mistake again, but to help others recognize it as well. And, and this is one of the reasons I became so adamant about pursuing my booster destruction series later on, uh, once I started into YouTube with Modern Warfare 2, because I knew as well as anyone how large of a hindrance to one's life boosting could be that in my past I had spent such incredible amounts of time pursuing this irrational fantasy of mine, time which could have been put to better use in innumerable ways, almost 
anything other than what I was doing, wilting away on this video game. So although Booster Destruction provided really entertaining gameplay, my true motivation for the series was to attempt to discourage people from boosting, discourage them from making the same mistake I once had by showing them how absolutely ridiculous it looked. I guess I can equate what I was doing, although on a lesser scale, as it is only a video game to a recovered alcoholic who goes out and, and campaigns against substance abuse. But for that matter, I mean, boosting, for me, it was like a drug way back when. As I already said, it gave me this false sense of ecstasy, which is, after all, what drugs are supposed to do, is, is it not? And I only wish there could have been someone back then that could have slapped me upside the head and told me what a waste of a human I had become so that I would have dropped the habit even sooner. If I could go back in time myself to see my 16-year-old self sitting like a worthless pile of shit in front of my TV cheating away, I would have taken a sledgehammer to every single electronic device in my room and incinerated it and proceeded to yell at myself to get the hell out of there and go out and get laid or just do anything, anything other than what I was doing. So jumping forward in time, when I got into free-for-all games on Modern Warfare 2 and the people in the lobbies who were boosting, even though they were doing it in a way that negatively impacted others, when they would actually recognize me from my videos and express shame for their actions and say they would never do it again, it was at least for me such a feeling of victory. Because yes, even though it is only a video game, it was something that took time away from the things that mattered in real life. And knowing that, I could honestly say that I had helped someone to become a more productive person and realize something that had taken me far too long. So in conclusion, guys, I hope you can all learn from my mistakes. But on the other hand, despite what I said about going back in time and whatnot, if I really think about it, would I change the past even if I could? It sounds so cliche, but the answer, I guess, is probably not. Because without all that having happened, I wouldn't be here today in front of all you awesome dudes having the time of my life, doing my best to entertain you on a daily basis and make your day brighter, even if for only five to ten minutes at a time.